God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So this morning, uh, sunrise service, we want to be looking at this topic today, the unexpected and expectation, the unexpected expectation. The unexpected expectation. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're expecting something and something else shows up. You had a thought, you got your mind made up, you felt, well, this is what I want, this is what I need, but somehow it comes in a different package. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And you're wondering, Lord, what is this about? And, and that, that's how, that's how the, the Israelites, when they, when they came into the, into the wilderness and there was no food and there was no water and they cried on Moses and Moses cried unto the Lord and the Lord released something out of heaven, baked out of heaven's kitchen. And when they saw it, they said, what is this? And they call it manna. Manna means what is this? And there are times that God wows us and and he just throws certain things at so you like, what is this? My God, I cannot believe that the Lord did this. Amen. And so I'm going to be reading from the book of 1 Kings in verse, chapter 17 from verse 8. If we cannot complete this today, this morning, then we'll continue in the second service. And so the word of God says here, verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 17. It says, And the word of the Lord came, saying unto him. And the word of the Lord came, saying unto him. So this conversation today begins with the word of God. It said, The word of God came, saying unto him. The basis of faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the word of God. Faith is not based on anything other than the word of God. You cannot successfully exercise faith just because you saw somebody exercising faith. You just cannot successfully exercise faith because you saw that somebody had some miracle that you desire. There's difference between desire and the will of God. You may desire to have something that's not a will of God for your life. And you can try to get it, it's not going to come. So faith, the basis, the foundation of faith is the word of God. If you can find it in the word and you can believe it and you have a revelation of it out of the word of God, you can stand on that and exercise your faith. How did Peter got under water? We were just talking about walking on water this morning before we got the service started. How did Peter do that? He said, at your word. It was the word of God. How did he go back in the ocean to throw back the net when he in the first place did not catch nothing after he toured all night and experienced fishermen? But he said to Jesus, I will do it at your word. In other words, I'm ready to walk by your word. So the basis of faith is the word of God. Beside the word of God, your faith has no foundation. And so here it begins with the word of God. So something's about to happen here. And, and Elijah had expectation. But at the end of the day, you find out that it was an unexpected expectation. Because God works in mysterious ways. The ways of God are so far different from our ways. It's so higher than our thoughts. We just cannot wrap our head around the divine power of God. God is too vast and too wide for human comprehension. But that's why we walk by faith and not by sight. We choose to follow him every day and every way. And so here, the Bible said the word of God came to him. And why? Because the brook had dried up. God has sent him to stay by the brook and he had been by the brook eating out of the sandwich dropped off by the ravens and drinking from the water. 
and God made the water to dry. And when God makes your water to dry, it's because it got something else for you. And a lot of time we're there wailing and crying over the dry water when God got something for us. We're there wondering why did God allow this to happen when something good is there ahead of us. So God allowed the brook to dry. There was a reason why God allowed the brook to dry. God wanted to move the servant of the Lord to a new level. So next time when your brook run dry and the sandwich stop coming, God has got something better for you. Hallelujah. That's just how God works. That's how God works. From one level, he moves you to the next level. And, and there's a reason why God does things like this. And it's amazing when I read the scripture, and the Bible says that God had been feeding them with manna throughout the journey in the wilderness. But as soon as they came onto the promised land, the manna stopped. God stopped throwing manas out of heaven. Now his babies will now learn to live by faith. Glory to God. God takes us through this walk of faith to strengthen your muzzle of faith. And some time ago I was talking about how the eagle make the eaglet fly. And how about that when he starts to flap those wings, the blood vessels start to receive blood. Because the eaglet need those vessels to break up and receive blood to strengthen the muscles of its wings. And that's going to help it through life. And sometimes God allows us to go through certain winding roads and coming through the mountains and the valleys and all of these ups and downs in life. And he's got a reason for it. And the reason is to make us better, not to make us better. When I start getting bitter against God, I'm not taking advantage of what God wants to do in my life. Therefore, I learn to follow, I learn to trust him. And so here, you see, the word of God came to him, interrupted him when he sat there and the brook was drying. Wait on the Lord. Somebody might just need to wait on the Lord. Glory to God. And let God speak and let God minister to you and move in your circumstance. He has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten me. God didn't go on vacation and forgot that I said a prayer last year or said a prayer last month or said a prayer last week. God has got everything under control. Glory to God. I just believe God for that. And so here it says, and, and the Lord said to him, saying this, this is the word. He said, arise. Arise. God gave him a command. He said, arise. Arise. There are times God will ask you to arise. God will ask you to arise. Glory to God. I was speaking to somebody yesterday. I said, said to him, uh, have you done this? He said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. I said, suppose God is waiting on you. You know, there are times that God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. But God is also saying, I'm waiting on you. You take a step. God move and God is saying to you, you move. Take a step. Do something. I will bless that thing that you do. Moses appeared before him in the burning bush. And the Lord said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? To have a dead shepherd rod. I said, no, to you it's dead. But I can make life out of a dead thing. I can bring something out of nothing. I can bring light out of darkness. So I'm going to prove that to you. I said, throw that thing on the ground. Release it to me. Give it to me. And Moses gave it to him. And he became a serpent. And he said, pick it back up. And he became a shepherd rod. That thing that you thought was dead, I can put life right into it. And that's the power of God. That thing that I thought is dead in my life, I, you know, I just get, God said, give it to me. I'll bring life right into it. I can make dry bones come back to life again. They become a mighty army. That's in my power to do. There's nothing Jehovah cannot do. He can do all things for with God. Nothing shall be impossible. Do you know that it was an angel that said that? Glory to God. If you don't believe the words of man, you should believe the words of angels at least. An angel said to Mary, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's some angel who came out of the presence of God. So if the angel tells me that with God, nothing shall be impossible, I better believe it. Glory to God. And so he said to the man of God in his desperation and dejection, 
sitting there while he sees the brook dry and expecting that God should bring more water out of that and create a miracle right there, God said, I have moved on. I have moved on. There are times God has moved on and we're still sitting there and waiting. But God has moved on. And God said to him, look at what the word God said. He said, rise and go to Zarephath that belonged to Zidon. What an unusual asking. Zidon is, is the place where uh, 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 the wife of, of the king Ahab, Jezebel, was born and bred. And Jezebel's father ruled in that region. And it was a place of idolatry and demonic operations. And God says, go right into it. And I asked myself, God, why would you ask somebody sometime to go in the fire? Why would you ask? Why would you even like Jesus ask Peter to come in the water? Why would you? Sometimes the Lord, the Lord just asks us to go against the wind and go right, right, just go against it. Just keep going. It, it knows that he, when Jesus came to shore, he knows that there was a demon possessed man who lived in the tombs, and yet he went right in there. Sometimes the Lord asks us to do these things and it doesn't make sense to you. But just follow God by faith. And God said to him, Go to Zarephath, that belonged to Zidon, and do what? And dwell there. And stay there. He said, Behold, I have, and this is powerful. The Lord said to him, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Say, forget about the dry brook. Forget about the sandwich from the ravens. I, God, know what you need. God knows your cares. God knows everything that I need. And because he is God, he makes provision for everything. You know, you've heard this word, when one door closes, another opens. That is very true. Sometimes we say it, we don't believe him. When one door closes, God has the ability to open the next door, and the next door, and the next door. The Bible says he has the keys of David. When he opens, no man can shut. When he shuts the door, no man can open it. I believe God has opened some doors for somebody here today, and no man is going to be able to shut your door. Hallelujah to God. Whatever God has done for you is permanent in the name of Jesus. And, and he said, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. And based on the word of God, it wasn't on what somebody said. Based on the word of God, it wasn't based on his experience. Based on the word of God, the Bible says he arose and he went to Zerophat without question. Think about how many times you've had to question God. And say, God, are you sure this is it? Are you sure it is you? And we're spending that time rationalizing when God is saying, Arise, for thy glory has come. It says, Shine, glory to God. And you're looking at the, dark, the darkness, and it said, Even when gross darkness shall cover the people, it said, Even then shall your glory arise upon you. That's what the word of God said. And so he didn't question the Lord. He just went. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city. When he came to the gate of the city. Behold, just as the Lord said. A widow woman. Not a married woman. A widow woman was there gathering sticks. Now, the Lord said to him. I have prepared a widow or commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. And then he comes to the gates of the city and there was the widow woman. And what was the widow woman doing? Gathering stick. Very unexpected. Now you would have thought, I would have thought that when the Lord said, I have commanded a widow to sustain thee, it would be a rich widow. It will be a widow that has a lot of money, not a widow who gathering sticks. It will be a widow who pulls by in a limousine. Glory to God. Uh, that's what I will be expecting. 
If the Lord would have told me, you go to the next city, I'll prepare a widow for you. I'll be in expectation of a rich widow. And as you look at this, the widow was gathering sticks. Uh, it shows to me that she was poor. And maybe poorer than Elijah. <laughs> Glory to God. How can God send you to a poorer person and expecting the poorer person to take care of you? Glory to God. Uh, when your eye will see that, you will be discouraged. And say, Lord, is this the with the woman that you asked me to come be with and, and will sustain me? She doesn't even have nothing. It was an unexpected expectation when she got there. But I believe the man of God summoned up courage because the word of God said so. Hallelujah. So when the word of God says so, it doesn't matter how it looks. <laughs> doesn't matter how he looks when the word of God says so it doesn't matter how he looks and the question is what do you do when the location doesn't look good now he said go to Zarephath got over there and the lady was gathering sticks and from the conversation the, the, there was no food in the town there was no food in that city the location didn't look good but yet the law said go over there I am going to sustain you over there. God was trying to challenge the faith of this man of God to see how he would respond. And sometimes the Lord already know the answer to the question, but yet he throws the question at you. I want to see how you respond. And your response tells you who you are. Your response tells you who you are. It's not God because God already knows what's in your mind. But God wants you to know how you are. You know, a lot of time we tell God, God, I, I will move the mountain for you. And the Lord shows up and presents the mountain to you and says, move the mountain. <laughs> and you say, God, I cannot do it. He knew that you couldn't do it. But he wants you to know that you could not do it. And so that you can learn to depend on him. Now think about Peter. Peter said to Jesus, I'm never going to deny you. No matter what happened, I'll die with you. I'll be there with you. If you go into the grave, I'll be the first one to go in. But when the time came, a little girl made Peter deny Jesus. Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him. But Jesus wanted Peter to know that he will deny him. Words are cheap. You can say what you want. But the foundation of a man is what you're made of. And not only what you're made of comes out when you are faced with difficulties and difficult situations like this. And so the location didn't look good to him, but yet he trusted the Lord. And what would you do when the package doesn't look perfect? And now, he said, God, the Lord told him, said, I've prepared, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain me. And he gets to town, the widow woman picking sticks. Expected a rich woman, now he sees a poor woman. So what should I be doing when the package doesn't look perfect? Suppose the promise is not looking promising. Doesn't seem promising. The Lord made the promises to you, but circumstance situation just kind of make the promises looking not promising. What should I be doing? Glory to God, we'll find out from this man. And as they had this conversation now see what happened and he arose he got there and the woman was fetching stick and then he called her and said fetch me or bring me i pray thee a little water in a vessel that i may drink that should be easy enough elijah said to the woman that was gathering stick the widow woman that the lord had commanded to care for him and sustain him through this period of famine because there was no rain and he said fetch me water and as she was going in verse 11 as she was going to fetch fetch water he called her and said bring me i pray thee a mussel of bread in thy hand he said why are you bringing the water i wanted to bring some bread with it because i'm hungry and look at what the woman said. And then she said in verse 11, 
as the Lord thy God leave it. She was very religious. Glory to God. As the Lord thy God leave it, I have no cake. <laughs> I have no cake. So she made it clear to the man of God. Now think about it. If you were this man of God, the Lord had commanded you and said, Go to Zarephath, uh, there were, where you were at the brook, the brook dried up, the raven stopped bringing the, the sandwiches, and then the Lord said, Move, go to a different town. I've commanded a widow to take care of you. You thought, okay, this widow, the husband died and left a lot of inheritance for her. She must have a lot of money. And you got there, and the widow is poor, picking sticks. And not only that, you ask the widow for a muscle of bread. You're asking just for a little. And the widow said to you, I have no cake. She said, I don't even have food. What would you do? And I think about what is going now in this man of God's mind. He said, but a handful of meal in a barrel. Still have a handful. And a little cruise of oil. That's all I got. He said, behold. He said, now, to make the matter worse, man of God. He said, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in. I may dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Now she's talking about death. She's supposed to be the sustainer of the man of God. And now she's saying to the man of God, your sustainer is going to die. As a matter of fact, waiting to die. As I read this, it was interesting that I said to myself, why did the widow felt the need to eat the bread before dying. Why not die and leave the bread for those who are hungry? <laughs> Glory to God. She must be very selfish. She, <laughs> she wanted to eat it all and then die and leave nothing for nobody. You're going to die. You're ready to die. Why not leave the food for the man of God? It would have been easy to say, man of God, I'm ready to die, but I'll give you the food, I'll go hungry die. It's easier for hungry to kill you than for food to kill you, right? The bread ain't going to kill them. The bread, eating the bread will sustain them for a little bit. Nobody eats bread and die except they poison the bread, and I'm sure that the woman didn't poison the bread. So likelihood, they were not going to die immediately. That bread was still sustain them for a while. But she said here, we want to eat it, and die. Glory to God. And it shows the, the very desperate situation that the widow woman was in. Yet, that was God's plan to sustain the man of God. And that's why we said God works in very mysterious ways. Some of us would have walked out of that situation. You got in there, you saw it, you said, no, this is not what the Lord is saying. This is not the person that God has prepared for me. This is not God's will for me. I'm out of here. Some of us would have judged the woman and said, well, the Lord told me that we have, you, you've been commanded to, to sustain me. and You're telling me you're going to eat and die. But the things that the man of God will have to do to maintain the level of his faith in God. As we deal with situations in life and sometimes very confusing situations and things that you don't understand and you find that sometimes unexpected expectations begin to happen around you, always remember what the Lord had done before. Never you forget what he done before. Our memories sometimes are so short. Our vision sometimes are so short. That we don't remember what the Lord did in time past. He was your help in ages past. And he will be your help in time to come. And that's why we love to say if he did it before. He's going to do it yet again. Never you forget. And, and it took a miracle. For this man of God to be sustained at the brook Cherub. While he was there, for the time that he was there, God commanded the raven to bring him sandwich. You might want to read a little bit about ravens. Ravens are very selfish animals. 
and very voracious animals. They're not going to share their food with, with their neighbors, let alone a human being. But God used that situation to speak to the man of God that I, God, can do anything and I can use anything. And so based on that past experience with God, he ought to know that in spite of the circumstance that surrounds the situation that the, the widow woman doesn't have, God can move in that situation. And we also need to remember that it was God that commanded the widow. It was God that said to Elijah, I, God, have commanded the widow to sustain you. So if God says something, he has the ability and the power to back it up. I refuse to look at the circumstance and situation that surround it. I just look unto God, the author and the finisher of my faith. Glory to God. That's why I will not look by my natural eyes. I need to switch into my spiritual eyes to begin to look by faith what the Lord has said he's going to do. Even when the location doesn't look right even when the package doesn't look perfect even when the promise is not promising yet i stand on the word of god and the promise of the almighty god that's what this man was doing here because there's no way a natural man who who is just like you and me will come into this situation when god has promised that i'm going to sustain you and finding out that the person that god has sent you to is poorer than you and is ready to die when you're not ready to die It takes a lot for somebody to come to a point where they say, we are ready to die now. She must have been going through a lot. Yet this is the person that the Lord said will sustain the man of God. It's an unexpected expectation. How do you manage that type of situation? One, I said, remember what the Lord has done in the past. And also remember, it's God who promised the promise when God makes a promise he has the ability to stand by it and ensure that it comes to pass because the word of God said he watches over his word to perform it he is a performer of promises he just doesn't promise performance humans promise performance but God performs promises glory to God that is his M.O., his modus operandi. He stands by his word. He fulfills his promises. Doesn't matter how long it takes. God is always going to come through for somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, 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 the, Bible, and the Bible says that a woman said, I'm going to eat and I'm going to die with my son. Not just me. We're going to dress this food and we're going to eat it and we're going to die. And Elijah said something to her. He said, fear not. Fear not. That's a word for somebody here today. Fear not. Don't be afraid to take that step with God. Don't be afraid to walk with God. Don't be afraid to obey the Lord. Don't be afraid even when the situation, the circumstance doesn't look right. Don't be afraid. God still got everything under his control and command and he said to her don't fear he said just go do as thou hast said he said what you say you're going to do you go ahead and do it but don't forget this part he said but make me therefore a little cake first make me something first give it to me first why Bring it to me and make for thee thereafter. And in verse 14, he said, For thus said the Lord God of Israel. Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Now, the woman, the woman said, just follow what I'm saying. The woman said, we're going to eat this. Me and my son, and we're going to die. But a man of God interrupted and said, you are not going to die. You shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Sometimes you need somebody to stop you from that thing that you're about to do that's going to bring destruction in your life. 
Glory be to God. The woman said, we're going to eat it and die. The man of God said, no, we're not dying. Why? Because it was the Lord who said it in verse 8. God commanded in verse 8. He said to him, arise, go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow to take care of you. Because God cannot lie. It would be impossible for this woman to die. Sometimes we need folk who will help our faith. And it's, al it's always the greater that blesses, blesses the lesser. So you need somebody who has faith to help your faith. So you just can't go to anybody and say, help my unbelief. No, you need somebody who has faith, who believes in God, to help your unbelief and your faith. The man of God believed God and was here to help the woman. I believe God loved the woman. I believe God loved the woman. And I believe the woman probably prayed to God. And, and for her, it was an answer to prayer. Because down in the New Testament, the Lord said, Jesus said, were there not many widows in Israel? Why did God choose the widow of Zarephath? So there could have been some element of desire in the widow's heart that pulled God to bring Elijah to her city and make Elijah to stay with her. And by the fact that Elijah was staying with her, sustained her. God said, I have sent command the widows to sustain you but in actuality it was the man of God that was sustaining the widow so the the, the blessing here is, is not so much as the man of God but the widow and the widow had to do certain things to activate the promise of God at that time, God will want you to do certain things to activate the word of God and the promise of God for your life. So it come to pass. And so the man of God said, now you, you, you're going to consume this bread and die. He said, don't eat your seed. He said, God has given you a seed to sustain you. Don't eat it. When you eat all of your seed, you're dying. That's what the Lord, the man of God was saying to the woman. Don't eat your seed. I know that you live in a very precarious situation. I know there's no water, there's no rain. I know everybody is dying. I know the economy is so bad. I know everyone is moving out of town. I know that you're under siege economically, socially. I know nothing is going well for you. All you have is this muscle of bread. You and your son, you're going to eat it, you're going to die. That's all you have. But do you really want to die? And the widow would have said, no, I don't want to die. But we can redeem this situation for both of us and he said for what you have I want you to sow a seed to God I want you to take out of it first he said I want you to give me a little bit first of what you have is it would take faith of a widow to truly do this now she's got just a little bit for herself and in her son they're ready to eat it because that's all they got and now the man of God is saying, I want you to cut it in half. <laughs> give me some first. If you want to die, give me some first. <laughs> she would have said, no. No. But the man of God said to her in verse 12, uh, she said, as the law leave it, I have not cake but a handful of meal in the barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering sticks, I'm going to dress it, and going to die. Man of God said, fear not, do as you said. But then he stopped her to say, I want you to throw something in my life, and that is going to make a difference in your life. And in verse 14, for thus said the Lord of Israel, the barrel of mill shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord shall send rain upon the earth. And she did, in verse 15, according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he in her house did eat many, many days. Now, when God makes a command, we be ready to trust the command. And we be ready to trust the commander, and we be ready to follow his command. 
So because she did what she did, preserve her. If she was selfish like she was, this conversation broke, broke, broke this woman up completely. If she was selfish like she started, she would have died. The only reason that she got saved and her son and the man of God was because she was willing to trust the man of God who brought the word of God to her. And when the man of God said, don't just eat, you your son and die. Make first for me and then go make for you and your son. And as soon as she did that, what happened was that she activated the promise of God for her life. And she was sustained. And now God works in mysterious ways. And the expectation can be unexpected. The man of God didn't expect all of this. Thought everything was going to be alright. You're going to live in a nice house. You're going to live with a rich widow. But God there, she had to help the widow's faith. But the widow also was willing to give out of the little that she had. And that changed everything for her and for her son and for the man of God. Now, when we find ourselves in this situation, would we do like the man of God did? If you're the bearer of the word. But if you're on the side of the widow, would you do what the widow did? Would you say, well, I don't believe what you're saying. I don't believe what you're saying. This is all I got. I just want to go do my thing and die. She would have died. And her son too. But she chose. It takes, it takes your determination and partnering with God to do stuff like this. She chose to say, God, I know I don't have a lot. As a matter of fact, what, what do I have to lose? This is all I got anyway and I'm ready to die in the first place. Lord, I can give you some of it. And I trust you with the rest. And as she did that, things began to happen in her life. And they were sustained for many, many days. She thought she was done. You know, you think that, well, life is over. No, it's not. It is, uh, no, it is not. You still got promises ahead of you that have not been fulfilled. There's still a future that needs to be achieved. God has a plan for you. It has nothing to do with what is happening around you. It has all to do with what God said. Thus said the Lord. If you can go with thus said the Lord, you can open any doors. You can change any circumstance. Glory to God. Our time is far spent. I want us to bow our heads as we pray today. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus for being here. We're talking about the unexpected expectations. Sometimes the package may not look presented. It may not look perfect. Sometimes the location may not look cool. Sometimes the promises doesn't seem promising. But we remember that God commanded and we trust the commander and follow his command. And that's all we do. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Now we give you praise. Thank you for all your children that came by here today to thank you for everything you've done and to listen to the word of the Lord. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, we do not walk by our own, our own desires and, and our own feelings. Lord, we follow our faith. And Father, as, we, as this man of God and this woman of God followed you, we pray that you help us, O oh God, to follow you in the name of Jesus let us trust you with everything. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we leave this place, we're not living in your presence. Let your presence come with us. Bless us, O oh God. This week, Lord, we command this week to be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Whatever we need, Lord, we shall receive. Whatever we ask for shall not be denied. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you once again. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we have prayed amen amen and a mighty mighty big amen god bless you in jesus if you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request we would like to hear about it please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org you are also welcome to join us on sundays for services beginning at 8 30 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. 
We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.